Hi, I'm Bruce, and welcome to my Rocky Mountain Labs. Um, today we're going to take a look at a Tektronix 2235. It's a dual channel, 100 megahertz oscilloscope with two time bases. The standard A and then the B time base gives you the advantage of uh, a B delay, uh, which acts like a, a zoom on the B channel and the secondary channel. And we'll demonstrate that in a little while. But um, the unit is in beautiful physical condition. I don't believe there's a scratch on the case. And a really nice, clean screen here, if we can see it. I'm trying to get a little glare off of it. Um, sharp trace. All the functions are here. Nice stand. Fully adjustable, and uh, give you a look at the back side in a moment here. We've got the four feet on or two feet on it. Rear feet are built into the uh, into the case. Let me turn this thing around a little. And we'll take a look at the back side. Very nice unit. Okay. We'll take the thing through its paces. Right now we are uh, displaying a uh, 1 megahertz trace on the uh, oscilloscope screen. We have, uh, oh, might as well go ahead and demonstrate a little bit. That's one megahertz. Obviously, we get it in 10 centimeters here. So we've covered the entire screen. Our intensity can turn up more than ample brightness, or we can adjust down till it's gone. We find a nice, comfortable setting. Looks good to me on the... Uh, on the video, let's go to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be nine, and then there's ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Now well, let's go ahead and jump to eighty, ninety, and hundred. Okay. Now, even at a hundred, there are things we can do. Like for instance, if I count right now, I'm in, I've pulled out my uh, times ten feature for the horizontal, so I'm running faster. Uh, by a factor of 10, then the switch would indicate, and I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 waveforms showing on the screen, which would indicate that I am 10 times 10, that's 100 megahertz that I'm running across there right now. And if I was to count each one of those little peaks, I'd see 100 of them. And the same thing would go if I move to... Uh, Channel 2. And I turn my coupling to channel 2. And we see that we have, once again, the 10 pulses. Or if I uh, take my times 10 off, I see I've got 100 there. And I can go backwards. That would be 90, 80, 70, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There's one. So both channel 1 and 2 are functioning. Um, we can change the, um, the range selector 
Right now I'm looking at a lower input per division, so I've, ex I've actually expanded my uh, incoming signal or allowed my signal to run over the screen. Now if I raise my voltage per division, we see it gets smaller. I can run from uh, 2 millivolts per division, which would be 16 millivolts from top to bottom of the screen, up to 50 millivolts per division, which would be 400 volts from top to bottom of the screen. And uh, what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 range settings on the switch. So same for channel 1. Let me go back to 1 here. And go back to 1. There we go. And same. I can change my amplitude by changing the volts per division. So I can choose to look at either channel 1 or 2 by the selector switch here. Right now we're at channel 1. I could go to channel 2 or I could look at both together. Um, we can change the uh, relative position of 1 versus 2. Let's, uh, let's change the voltage on the input there and let's say we, ra we change channel 1, we raise it two divisions and then we lower channel 2, two divisions. Now we could run two signals on here simultaneously, which uh, I could demonstrate easily enough. Normally I wouldn't parallel an input, but at lower frequencies it's certainly not a problem. Um, we are on different uh, range factors right now, so the waveforms look different. Maybe that's good. It gives us an indication that we're functioning. So our positions are working fine. We can choose channel 2, channel 1, or both. That's working fine. Right now we're alternating. We could go into chop mode. So we have the alternating or chop mode. And in the alternating mode, uh, we are drawing the display for signal 1, and then we draw signal 2. Then we go back and draw signal 1 and come down and do signal 2 again. It alternates uh, between the waveforms. And... Um, it, it, for every reset of the screen, it uh, it knows to redraw it. It works well at higher frequencies, uh, uh, but when you get down into the low frequencies, it takes so long to draw a waveform uh, that you would you would lose the the visibility of the bottom. It would uh, would look strange. So you go to chop mode, and in chop mode, you're you're drawing portions of the of the signal on the top and then you jump down and do a portion of the bottom then you come back up and do a little more of the top then down and do the bottom and so on. You know, usually like a hundred thousand times a second something like that and um, and then you're able to draw the slower frequencies and get a continuous looking trace both on on signal one and two. So anyway we've got alternating and chop or we can add the signals together to provide a composite of what it would look like if you added A and B. Um, so right now let's take a look at channel 1 again. We'll bring channel 1 back down to the uh, uh, halfway line here. and uh, Each of my channel 1 and channel 2 inputs have a selector underneath the range which allows me to choose either an AC input where I'm going through a DC blocking capacitor or I can go to ground where I can I can move my trace up and down and center it on any one of the divisions I, I care to center on 
or on DC mode where I remove the blocking capacitor and allow DC components and AC components both to enter the scope and be displayed on screen. Um, that appears on both channel 1 and channel 2. We have an inversion button that allows channel 2 to invert its signal and uh, allow you to see what that would look like then uh, up against channel A or maybe when you add them together uh, let's see right now we'll hit the I'm displaying both waveforms I'm going to hit the inversion button for channel 2 and you see that it's exact opposite of A and then if I uh, if I go to add my result is a straight line because the inversion of A added together with A is going to provide just a straight line. Uh, if I uninvert it, then we see that we get a, a signal that is the composite of both signals added together. And here we go back again. Um, let's see, we have um, the range switch. Right now I am in uh, horizontal mode. I'm on. I'm using the A time base, which is the standard time base for channel one and two, and I can change the time base by just rotating the switch. Right now I'm going into a uh, slower mode for the for the time base. So of course I'm going to repeat more frequently the signal that's coming in. Uh, I'm re reducing the uh, the frequency per division, or seconds per division actually, the time per division that I'm going to allow the frequency to change. And uh, like I showed earlier, we have the times 10 button. So that's functioning. We can uh, position horizontally the uh, the waveform on the screen. That's working. And uh, now we're getting over into the trigger area. The trigger's been working, that's why we've been able to lock the signal. But if I go into normal mode, push the normal button in, um, there's really only one spot on the dial where I'm going to be able to lock my signal. And I'll leave it there. You'll see that the light is on over here when I'm locked. I can go to the auto mode and um, we're locked again and if I try to move my signal it it shifts it a little bit and under certain circumstances I might lose lock doing that but uh, but not right at this moment huh um, about the only thing I can say negative about this machine right now, everything is working fine on it, and it's in beautiful physical shape, but there are two very small flaws, and that is that the, the shell of the knob for both level switches have started to come off. Uh, on the bottom level switch, the shell is completely off, and you're left with the, the underliner of the, of the knob works perfectly fine and it's grippable and it, it doesn't impede the function at all. On the upper level switch, which didn't, doesn't get used as often because it's on the B time base, there still is a remnant of the original knob, um, but it too will eventually fall off. But both knobs will be will remain active. They don't look offensive. It's just a I wish I had the uh, the knobs to replace in there, but I don't. And uh, small small problem, but it's there. Okay. Okay, I'm uh, now displaying a um, square wave input. It's uh, coming from that signal generator with the uh, lighted switch up there. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're, right now, this is this is channel one using the A time base. Now, if I was to take my switch for the time base and move it to the center where I'm alternating, 
I'm going to turn this brightness down a little. we can work with that let's hopefully that'll work for us uh, what I can do now is I can begin to vary my um, my B delay using this 10 turn pot down here and as I do so you're going to start to see the brightness on some of the A display and the B display start to go away. What's happening is I'm picking a spot on the A display that I'm going to want to take a look at down below on the B. Um, and then I can take my range knob and I can pull it out a little and change change the amplification on the B display. Actually change the uh, horizontal time base. So if I make the time base faster I basically expanded the waveform. So on the top up here this is my A signal and it's showing me that I'm looking at these three center um, square wave peaks here and I'm displaying them on B down below, but on B I'm expanded. So I can get a better look at what's going on. I can even do it more. So here I'm looking at the little overshoot glitch as I go negative. Same thing for the positive over here. I can change my positioning a little bit to better display it. Here I can see the uh, overshoot glitch. And then if I go back to my uh, B delay and I start to remove the delay, we should. Uh, well, we got to remove the amplification here. Let's. There we go. Okay, at this point, what I'm doing is I'm looking at a video signal coming from a, um, a little uh, DVD player. And. Um, that's on my A channel. Uh, I've adjusted my level control to try and freeze as much of it as I could. But then I can go turn my uh, A, B time base selector, I can turn it to alternating and I can see both A and B. Now in the beginning, if, uh, if I have the time bases locked together so that A equals B, then as I look on the top and I adjust my 10 turn pot, I'm going to see a highlighted bar move across the screen. And uh, on the bottom I will see portions of the, uh, of the signal. So I'm kind of picking an area that I want to look at. So let's, let's say I want to look in this area here. But I want now to expand my B picture so I get a much more in-depth view of what's going on. So I'm going to pull out on the time base knob, rotate it to the right, and now my B signal is one step up uh, in time base value than is my, uh, my A. So I've actually expanded it a little. I can do it again and you'll notice that my my brightness area has narrowed on the um, on the A channel that's saying that I've, I've, I can only display less of my A uh, down below on my B because I've expanded it. Yep, we just lost our video signal let me uh, turn it back on again no problem okay so what we see now, I've, I'm adjusting my, uh, my B delay so that I'm picking on the A channel what I want to look at and I'm seeing it on the bottom here. 
So here I see my blanking signal from my video, which would represent zero volts um, for the black. And uh, then I see it rise and give me a series of color bursts. And then I jump into some video information off on the right. And I've, I've able, I'm able now to expand this and get a much closer look at it. Uh, while at the same time I'm still displaying on uh, on A above what I'm looking at. Now, I just went up one more step on my uh, my B time base and I've expanded it even more so you get a little better view of what it looks like. And by playing around with the level controls and so on you can kinda freeze momentarily uh, a lot of the activity that's going on in between so that's uh, basically the purpose of the uh, of the B time channel and time delay. Uh, again, it allows me to pick out an area on on a composite signal that I'm looking I want to look at in depth. I can display the in depth view on B, and I can I can adjust the time base on B independent of the time base on A, which gives me different zoom values. It's as if I was zooming in on the A channel and, and expanding it. Okay. Okay, at this point what I want to do is I want to perform a bandwidth check. Uh, we're connected on channel 1 right now. I've got a 1 megahertz signal coming in from the PTS 500. I've got it adjusted so we have four divisions up and down. And uh, I'm going to raise the frequency now to the 100 megahertz limit. Oh, yeah, let me take a moment here. In the manual, it tells me that if I want to measure my bandwidth, that it's measured with a vertically centered six division reference signal from a 50 ohm source driving 50 ohm coaxial cable terminated in 50 ohms both at the input connector and at the probe input with the volts division variable. Uh, control in the cow position. Okay, well, we're in the cow position. Um, we are terminated with a 50 ohm uh, terminator here. I have 50 ohms terminated here. Um, we are feeding the signal, like I said, so that we're four up and four down. Now, when I go to my 100 megahertz position, a 3 dB loss would produce 2.83 uh, divisions up and down. That would be a 3 dB loss. We're rated at 100 megahertz 3 dB, so we're gonna we're going to verify using a 300 megahertz scope. All right, we're four up, four down. Seems to be no problem. We're going to switch to uh, 100 megahertz over here. We're going to double check to make sure that we have not changed um, our amplitude. Alright, and what I'm seeing I'm seeing that my amplitude dropped just a hair, so I'm going to readjust it. All right. So we're through, we're again four divisions up, four divisions down. I move back to my scope, and we see we have a loss, which is expected, and understood. And let's uh, see if we can get it intensified just a little bit so it's a little easier to see maybe. All right. And what I see is I am, um, let's check my vertical position. There we go. I am three bars up instead of four and three bars down and it's just under that so we're 
we're about, I don't know, 2.88, maybe 2.87, somewhere in there, um, divisions up and divisions down. 2.83 would be 3 dB. 2.87, we're doing a little bit better than uh, 3 dB at the moment. Okay. That's on channel 1. So channel 1 passed. Let's take a look at channel 2. And let's see. Alright, let's get back down to uh, 1 megahertz. Make sure that we are adjusted. Okay, so we are up and down four divisions. And then we're going to um, I'm going to check that on the uh, 300 megahertz scope. Okay. And there we go. We are up three, up four, down four. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to 100. We adjust for the slight loss here. Okay. All right, and on channel two, I see that I am again one, two, three, just slightly less than three divisions up and down. So we are 2.8, better than 2.83, we're somewhere between 2.83 and 3. So both channels are passing the bandwidth test to 100 megahertz. Okay, we're measuring now a 10 hertz signal coming from this HP3320B precision uh, uh, frequency synthesizer that covers from 0 to about 13 megahertz. Let's go to 1 megahertz. Okay. 1 megahertz. We're up 4 divisions, down 4 divisions perfectly. And all, if all I do is now turn my range switch on my generator back down to 10 hertz, there's 10, and we adjust the range switch to get us back in here to view the signal. shows us that we're up four and down four so we've uh, essentially we didn't uh, we didn't suffer any loss at all down to 10 Hertz let's uh, use our secondary scope our 300 megahertz scope as a check Okay, I see that at 10 hertz I am up 4 and down 4. And again at 1 megahertz, did I do I change at all? I'm up 4 and down 4. So no. I see no see no change on my 300 megahertz scope. And um, so both scopes are in agreement. Um, the generator is putting out a flat signal uh, that gets me up four and down four divisions, and I had no loss. So, coming back to channel B, that was on channel A. Okay, channel B. 
I have a um, make sure we're centered here. Up four, down four, and that's at one megahertz. Now, if I reduce my range back down to 10 hertz, the question is, do I hold that plus and minus four divisions? And the answer is yes. So both channel A and B are flat from 10 hertz up to uh, megahertz and then we measured from a megahertz up to a hundred megahertz and we saw that we dropped 3 dB at the high end uh, actually less than 3 dB so we pass our bandwidth test um, about the only thing left to do would be to check a uh, uh, a deflection uh, to make sure that we're calibrated um, voltage wise and we'll set up to do all right, we're set up to check the uh, DC deflection. Um, we are right now um, all the way on 5 volts per division, but um, we're using the times 10 probe. And that, that makes us now, instead of 5 volts per division, we are times 10, we're 50 volts per division. I'm feeding a 100 volt signal in from, from this fluke. DC voltage calibrator through the probe, dividing it by 10, and uh, and I, will, I am on 5 volts per division, so uh, 5 times 10 is 50. I've got 100 volts coming in, and I should go up two divisions. And we did. We went exactly two divisions up. Let's uh, see if we can get that to, there we go. And if I go back up here and I turn my step down to say 50, I'm now feeding 50 volts in, dividing by 10, which gives me 5. I'm going into 5 volts per division here, and I see I am up one division. And if I flip my switch to ground, I see that I have zero properly. I'm up one division, so that's uh, 50 volts. If I uh, go to the 20 volts per division, I'll go 20, 40, and a half, that'd be 10, 20, 40, 50. So I'm up 50 volts on the, on the times two. Let's uh, take our down, take ourselves down to um, 40 volts, and if I go times one, and then I'm dividing by 10 again, so instead of I'm getting 10 volts per division now, and I see that my line is all the way up at the top, so I'm 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, 30 would be three divisions. And we're right on the nose, three divisions. 20 volts, two divisions. One, two. 10 volts, one division. So no problem there. If I go to the 0 0.5, uh, times 10, it'd be 5 volts per division. I get 10 volts, so I have, I'm two divisions up at this point. And I could go, uh, actually, I could, uh, let's go ahead and remove the uh, times 10 from the probe. And right now, I should be reading one one volt per division. I'm reading one division up. If I go to point 0.5, I've got two divisions up. If I go to point uh, 2, I wouldn't be able to display it. I have to reduce my 
voltage to point eight. Uh, let's see, yes. So if I go to point two, again, I'm at the top of the scale. If I go to point seven, point six, I am three divisions up, point six. Okay. We are at 0.2 volts, and um, I am one division up right now. If I go to the 0.1, I go to two divisions up. If I go to 50, I'm, I'm at the top of the scale, which would be correct. Okay, and if I uh, reduce this, take myself up to 4.04. .04, Point zero four volts um, at twenty uh, millivolts per, per division. That'd be forty millivolts. I'm up two divisions. If I go ten millivolts per division, I'm up four divisions. If I drop my voltage to two or one, let's say one point zero one, would be ten millivolts. And I am reading 10 millivolts, I'm up one division. I could go 5 millivolts division, I'm up two divisions. We're picking up some noise off of my uh, calibrator. And if I am uh, If I go to 0 .04, 0 0 0.004, that'd be 4 millivolts, and 2 millivolts per division, I would be up 2 divisions, and I'm centered around 2 divisions there. Noise is quite terrible, though. Okay, well, we've moved to channel 2. We are uh, going direct probe. I am feeding in 4 millivolts. I am on the 2 millivolts per division, and I see I am up 2 divisions. Uh, again, we're quite noisy here, but we're centered on the 2 division line. If I go to uh, 5 millivolts per division, we are under a full division, but we can bring ourselves up to 5 millivolts. And we are now centered on one division. If I was to go to um, 10 millivolts, I see that I've gone up two divisions. If I go up um, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, I can go up to 20 millivolts. And I should be at the top of the uh, the screen and I am. Now changing channel 2's range to 10 millivolts per division I see I am now two divisions up and my noise has become less significant. If I go to 20 millivolts per division I'm one division up. If I uh, go to 50 millivolts per division and Let's put um, 100 millivolts in. 50 millivolts per division, I am one, two divisions up. And that's exactly what I would have expected. If I go to 100 millivolts per division, I am one division up. If I uh, go to... Okay, I'm at uh, one volt uh, out of my power unit. I'm coming in to the B channel at 0.5 volts per division. I'm two divisions up, that's one volt. No problem. If I go to one volt per division, I drop to one division. Not a problem. If I go to two volts per division, I'm a half a division. But let's go ahead and, and take ourselves up to... Um, Four, five, six, seven, eight. 
we should be at the top of the screen, and we are. Now if I uh, go 5 volts per division, 5 and 3 fifths, which would make sense. If I go um, 5 volts per division, okay, 5 volts into 5 volts per division, I'm up 1. So, now, if I kick on the, uh, the probe divide by 10, and I should then be able to There's 50 volts, and I am one division up at 5 volts per division times 10 to be 50 volts, and all of that makes perfect sense. So, channel B is also working very well um, on the range. So there we have it. We've uh, we've gone over the uh, bandwidth. We've gone over the um, volts per division uh, calibration. We've uh, given you a tour of all of the features. We've tested every feature on it uh, with exception of uh, some external coupling and so on. Um, there is a an input in the back for a z-axis input which allows you to do some fancy modulation of the uh, waveform. Actually I've seen guys provide something that looks uh, look similar to uh, television application on the CRT um, using that z-axis, but I've never really dabbled with it myself. The unit is working flawlessly. Um, it looks flawless. It will come with um, a wonderful manual. You'll have your choice if you notify me, I can give you a physical manual. It's uh, it's quite heavy, so it would add a few pounds to the uh, to the unit. Or I can put it on uh, DVD, which would add almost no weight at all, and you wouldn't have to pay for the shipping on it, uh, and you still would have reference material for any service or usage of the unit. Um, you're going to need to buy yourself a set of probes, but uh, on eBay, if you take a look, you can find 100 megahertz probes, uh, a pair of them running for 10 to 15 bucks, something like that. So, I uh, thank you for listening. I wish you uh, good bidding, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.